really do is use descriptive titles for search engine optimization. So main website. If I could ever type. All right. And then now I get to start building out my actual content here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a div tag. I use divs because they load quicker than tables. Um, I'll probably get into that in a few minutes. If not, then I'm sure it'll be covered in another video. And then ID equals header. And I'm going to explain the difference between header and, uh, and ID in a class um, here in a few minutes. And I'll drop this down. And I'm also going to create that add space. and then create one for content and then finally oops, footer All right. so now going back up here I'm going to create an h1 tag so my largest header tag I'll call it Hewitt Media Designs but if we flip back over to our Photoshop image, which I don't have open, so I'll just open it really quick. Should have saved it and left it open. Um, don't mind that, just a warning about my graphics cards and Photoshop web layout. So now you'll notice that the title actually, or the um, ID of the site actually has two different colors in it. And I don't want to create an image to do this, so what I do is go into Dreamweaver and then wrap span tag oops span tag around the media design section all right and then lastly i like to use uh, lists for my menus it just it makes it easier to work with you it gives you a little more flexibility than just regular images um, you can style them a little easier uh, you don't really have to change much aside from your styling um, to do a horizontal uh, horizontal menu rather rather than a vertical menu, um, so we'll go ahead and do that UL and UL. Add my link in there and close out my list item tag. Okay, just copy that, paste it. Alright, and we'll just put home, oops, about me, um, oops, what else did I have, designs, tutorials, and finally contact me. Alright, so now our menu is done. So I'll go ahead and save this. I'm going to actually get to bring up uh, Mozilla and show you what the page is like. So right now this is what our default page looks like. There's no color, nothing. Um, so, And there's a couple uh, tools that I want to talk about before I go any further. Um, for Firefox you can download Firebug which is what I use all the time for my uh, CSS changes and all that stuff. Um, it allows you to go in and make changes based on, or to the version that's in your cache rather than um, going out to the server and uploading a file all the time. So it just makes things a little easier and it gives you a chance to actually uh, make simple changes quickly. Um, you can download that, go to tools, add-ons, and then get add-ons, and then type on Firebug. Oops, and then just search for that. Um, make sure you get just the regular Firebug add-on. I mean, there's plenty of different add-ons for Firebug, so just make sure that you have uh, the actual program itself. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to talk about was actually in Internet Explorer. Those of you who are using Internet Explorer 8 will find this kind of useful. Uh, oops, localhost. And I'm just running uh, localhost using Xamp and, and Apache. Um, I did a video on this so you can go ahead and watch that on and setting up a localhost web server for your computer. Uh, so if I wanted to uh, look at this through um, Internet Explorer, there actually is developer tools, which is built in, which is similar to Firebug. It doesn't have the full flexibility that Firebug has, but it is still a pretty good uh, debugging tool for Internet Explorer. So we'll go ahead and hit that, and it'll bring up this window, and you can actually choose between browser mode for Internet Explorer 8 
or Internet Explorer 7, which is nice. You don't have to have two versions of, which was virtually impossible before, to do testing for Internet Explorer 8 or 7. Um, I had actually had two dedicated computers to, to do the testing for that before. And then once I found this, I thought that was pretty, pretty cool and pretty easy to use. So uh, we'll get back to the tutorial now. So back over here, um, I'm just in Firefox. I'm going to hit the Firebug button down here, which is installed on my computer. Um, it'll bring up this little window. Right now, I don't have any styling in here whatsoever. So if I hit Edit and do Body background and set the color to dark gray. It'll automatically change it for me. So if I do have any styling uh, set within my CSS style sheet, and you can choose from multiple style sheets, um, it, I can make cha changes and then just copy everything and paste it into whatever my um, into, into my file. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started with styling my header, and I'm just going to do it from Firebug just because I think it's easier to see the live changes happen rather than click down and see. Um, plus it gives me an idea if there's any compatibility issues. So we'll go down here and then type in header. And the difference between um, creating an ID and creating a class, this pound sign is used for IDs, and there's a period out front of any uh, class designation, which I'm going to show you here in a little, uh, in a few minutes. So, header, we'll set the background URL because we're adding a background image, and because it's the actual CSS style sheet, we have to go up a directory. So, dot slashes in the current directory, dot dot slashes up one directory. So, we'll go there, images forward slash blue underscore bg dot jpg for our JPEG image and then you'll see that it tiles and we don't want that so we'll do repeat on the x-axis and then you see we get an effect like we want but there's uh, two more attributes that I want to add there's top and then left which assigns the image to the top left corner of that element um, and then that's done so we'll do float left um, I use floats for all of my designs and the reason why I do this is I've never had very good luck with uh, relative, I mean not at, relative, absolute positioning. So float left and then we have to set our width to 100%. And then we'll do um, margin bottom and we'll do three pixels. And what this will do, it'll give us um, our white bar right here. If you look back at our design right here, that's what what is uh, causing that white bar. Um, so we'll come back over here. I'm going to change this body background to white, which is what we had originally wanted. And then also give our padding zero pixels, so it takes all padding out, and then margin zero pixels, and you'll see it, this bumps up to the top. Uh, by default, the body tag has margin spacing, so we don't want uh, anything to conflict with, uh, with our design, so we take all the spacing out for our body tag. So now we go into our header, and this works in like a hierarchy. So header is our first element, space, and then we put in your second element. So H1 is actually within our header element. Uh, if we look at our code, switch over to the HTML view, go into body, then you'll see this header this header div tag. Now if we open this up, you'll see H1, which is what we're styling now. So we'll go back over here. Um, you'll notice it doesn't have uh, the ability to edit anything right now, so all you do is just hit this edit button, and it'll get you back to where you were before. Do color white. And then we'll do margin and the first uh, the first attribute in the margin uh, designation is top and bottom or your top L, uh, attribute so we'll do zero oops actually I did that backwards uh, actually I wanted pa uh, padding zero em so it keeps your margin spacing and then one em from the left and right. So there we go. And then we also want float left, so that way it bumps it all the way to the left. And then you'll notice that our uh, menu just 
one up along the side of that. And then header h1, and then span with our header.